Hi, my name is Tia Salvesi, and I'm an extension agent with the University of Florida, um, IFAS Extension in Hillsborough County. And I'd like to share with you my presentation on using multimedia strategies to extend the reach of extension education. So a little background here, um, you know, it's 2023, the use of technology is becoming widely adopted in extension to enhance, you know, extension client interactions. In the old days when we used to just have a fact sheet, now we can write blogs that have unlimited links to all of our publications. Um, we're also working in a time of you know, different delivery methods of our programs with both remote and hybrid delivery, as well as the traditional, you know, in-person classes and, you know, teaching a class on Zoom that leads to, you know, recording the class and then you can post that on YouTube. And so being able to reach a lot more people, you know, with the online learning, sharing the recordings, all of this can lead to greater program impacts. Um, you can take surveys of people who even watch your recordings, even if you don't see them live in person, and ultimately having um, clients adopt new practices and change their behavior, you know, without even having to leave their homes, because there's so much you can do on the computer nowadays. So I'm going to give you some strategies today on you know, providing links, incorporating multimedia strategies on multiple virtual platforms that can help engage new audiences and um, extend the reach of extension. So materials and methods, um, I'm looking at different multimedia strategies to include one or a combination of, you know, really basic things like photos, videos, fact sheets, blogs, uh, YouTube videos, and I'm going to talk about the use of QR codes. And what I'm finding is, you know, the more of these multimedia strategies we can use and link them together um, can get the best impacts. So let me talk about fact sheets here. Um, you know, fact sheets are a traditional extension outreach method, and they can now be enhanced. Um, you know, we can use photos, we can use screenshots like here for the YouTube video. Um, we can use a QR code to get them to the blog link, which includes the YouTube videos. And we can also be putting links here to like our UF EDIS publications um, within the fact sheet. And now the readers can actually pick up that website and go straight there. Um, so that's a great way to enhance your fact sheet. Now, um, blogs to me are the new fact sheet because you can put all the same information here, but um, it's an easier to read format, clickable. You know, they can be a little longer and um, more succinct. So again, in a blog, you can put links to uh, YouTube videos and here they are actually clickable. Um, you can put links to the fact sheets where they can go and print it out. Um, also links to EDIS publications. Um, you could just put a ton of, ton of links in blogs. So that's a good thing about those. Now, videos are increasing in popularity. Um, I'm currently averaging about a thousand views of like all of my videos every month. And so that's a lot of people reaching a thousand people a month. Um, for the videos that we post on the YouTube. So I am, you know, post them on the UF IFAS Extension Hillsborough County channel. Um, here's some examples of the videos, like this short one on just how to fertilize vegetables in a grow box, you know, which is a short video, or um, even the webinar recordings, such as this gardening with Florida native plants, which is almost an hour and a half long. Now these are reported, you know, in my extension reports as social media reach. Although if they're doing a survey that could go towards um, programming. 
And um, a way you can get some survey results is, you know, at the end of the YouTube, um, you can put a QR link for them to take the survey or in the video description, you can put the link to your survey in there as well. So there's um, more, more room for, you know, integrating surveys. I've heard a program where you can actually stop the video, make them take a survey to continue watching, but I haven't implemented that yet. So videos in PowerPoints, you know, showing some technique that is just hard to describe, like, you know, breaking up the clumps in the soil. Um, these are great things to just enhance your PowerPoint presentations um, just a little bit more to the next level. Um, now, QR codes are really useful. You know, some people are adopting, some people are not. You know, you basically have to have a smartphone or, or something that you can read the QR code, but this is a great way for when the people are watching the recordings later, they can go back and get that information. Um, also for marketing, QR codes are great um, because, you know, you post a flyer, you know, paper flyer or online, and you can have the link to register. Um, you can have the QR code to register. Here's one of my flyers on the, on the right, how to fertilize plants for homeowners. And you can find the registration link here on, uh, here's another example. This is from some colleagues at the University of Hawaii where they're having a carrot field day and they have the QR code and then they have the, the register at bit.ly link because often these registration are, the websites are very long. So having a QR just gets one more way to get them there to get them to sign up. Um, QR codes are also great for sharing links. For example, in this PowerPoint presentation on the right, I am encouraging people to visit my publication on edible landscaping using the nine Florida friendly landscaping principles. And, you know, instead of giving them this cumbersome link, you can also use the QR code. I like to include both the QR code and the link because people just go both ways on it. Um, but you can put links to publications like this EDIS publication, to your blogs, to your fact sheets, to your videos. And um, so just another way to share information across multiple platforms. Um, now, QR codes can also be used to collect surveys, and this has uh, been really important in, in my program on the last slide in the PowerPoint. I just say, you know, thank you, and here's my email, and scan this QR code to take the survey. In the Zoom webinar, I also, you know, put the physical link in the chat box, but, you know, for the people watching it later, watching the recording, they can go back and still take the survey so I can capture their knowledge gain and behavior change. And here's just some um, numbers from last year, 2022. I had a total of 370 surveys completed and um, 98 survey responses were collected using that QR code. And um, 272 were collected just by using like the link in the chat box or that I emailed them later. So, you know, it's, it's not quite a third, um, but it is a substantial number. Maybe I wouldn't have gotten these responses, you know, almost a hundred people if, if I didn't use that method. Um, so just something to consider. And then looking at all the numbers from my programs in 2022, um, last year I taught 38 classes with um, 2,457 participants. Um, the total reach of the website was 3,565. Um, more than half a million Facebook posts, I mean, Facebook reach, um, Instagram, the blogs, these are a pretty high number here, you know, much greater than the website and some of the other social media. So blogs, a great tool. And the, the YouTube videos, um, almost 20,000 views here. And so when you kind of add these numbers up, um, you know, the other multimedia strategies like the Facebook, the social media, the blog to get the information out, 
um, you know, is close to three quarters of a million reach on those. And uh, when you do the math, you know, the Zoom and the in-person, these live programming classes only accounted for 0.3% of my total reach. Um, so, you know, this is something that I'd like to bring to my administrators and let them know, like, look how many people we are reaching. You know, they they say, oh, well, we can still most for the most part, just count the the live or the Zoom participants. But, you know, if we were able to capture survey data from this extended reach um, that could really show a lot more impacts. But also, you know, just all these other things are great for marketing, for branding, for, you know, letting people know about your program and recruiting them into the classes where you can collect surveys. So in conclusion, um, there's still more work to do to fully capture the impacts of these multimedia strategies, like de developing survey me methods. Um, but this is a great tool for extension educators to incorporate these new digital technologies to extend the reach of their education and outreach and ultimately their impacts too. So thanks for taking the time to watch and you can email me here tsilbasi at ufl.edu or follow and connect with us online. Here is our Facebook page, our Instagram our Eventbrite with the upcoming events. You can view my blogs and visit our website. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.